This is an overview of the testing I've been doing on copper bullets the, uh, out of my 6.5 Creedmoor. The first three are 120 grain. The fourth one is the 127 grain long range X bullet by Barnes. I'm going to start here with the Hornady GMX. Uh, I loaded these first three up with exactly the same powder charge. I backed off just slightly on the powder charge on the last one because it was a seven grain heavier bullet and I was showing just minimal pressure signs just wanted to play it safe. With the Hornady GMX at the muzzle shooting into the gel I got 2,866 feet per second on impact with a retained weight of 113.6 grains out of that 120 grain bullet. Um, the bullet started to mushroom roughly within a quarter inch of penetration into the gel and uh, leading edge resting at 28 and three quarter inches. From the one inch mark to the 14 inch mark is where you had your large wound cavity at a four and a half inch diameter on that permanent wound cavity. From the 14 inch to the 22 inch you had roughly a one inch diameter on that permanent wound cavity and then it pin lined to where the bullet rested. On the low velocity round and I punched it into the ballistic calculator at roughly a 430 yard shot impacted the gel at 2094 feet per second with a retained weight of 119.1 that mushroom uh, bullet started to mushroom at roughly three quarters of an inch into the gel and penetrated all the way through both blocks went into the third set of blocks I had just a little bit and it kicked it back found it on the ground so we had just over 30 inches of penetration there From the uh, one, roughly one inches into 12 inches, the diameter of that permanent wound cavity was three and three quarter inches. From the 12 inch to the 18 inch mark, it was roughly that one inch diameter. Moving next to the Nosler E tip, my muzzle velocity and impact on the gel was 2,845 feet per second. My retained weight was 118.5 grains. The start of the mushroom was a half an inch in to the ballistics uh, gelatin. And it uh, exited my second block at 30 plus inches, which is why I started using three blocks. Uh, I was able to find that bullet on the ground. From the one inch into the gel to 10 inches, you had three and five eighths diameter on that permanent uh, wound cavity. From the 10 inch mark to the 19 and a half inch mark, you had that rough one inch diameter permanent wound cavity. With the low velocity round punched in the calc uh, ballistics calculator was really uh, similar to the GMX at 430 yards. It was moving 2,098 feet per second on impact with a retained weight of 118.5 grains. The, that started mushrooming at the 5 eighths of an inch into the gel, and the bullet had stopped at 21 and 5 eighths inches. From the one inch mark to the 13 inch, you had the, a three and a half inch diameter permanent wound cavity, and from that 13 inch mark to out to 17 inches, you had a one inch permanent wound cavity. Um, and then, like I said, that's, the high velocity bullet exiting the gel is why I used a third block with the Hornady GMX, which worked. Then we come over here to the Barnes TTSX. Um, same powder charge, same grain weight bullet, only got 2,554 feet per second. Um, all shot out of the same rifle, using the same brass, same primer, same powder but uh, drastically less velocity. Its retained weight was 119.1 grains. The start of that mushroom was about one inch into the ballistics gelatin, and the bullet stopped at 28 and a quarter inches. From the inch and a half to the 10 inch mark, you had um, 
roughly three and a quarter inch diameter permanent wound cavity and from the 10 inch mark to the 13 inch mark you had a roughly one inch permanent wound cavity diameter the low velocity round was only it was 2117 feet per second but with the ballistics coefficient of these bullets that only place that impact at 230 yards when punched into the ballistics calculator the retained weight on that bullet was 119.4 the start of that mushroom was an inch into the block it stopped at 29 and 3 8 inches of penetration from the 2 inch mark to the 9 inch mark you had roughly a 3 inch diameter permanent wound cavity from the 9 inch mark to the 12 inch mark was that rough 1 inch diameter permanent wound cavity and then I got some extra notes on here saying I'd use the same powder charger and everything not sure why it was that much lower velocity then we have our LRX which I had high hopes for this and being a long range bullet was hoping they used a slightly softer copper as at reduced velocities at longer ranges it needs to open up easier um, but like I suspected it's probably the exact same copper as the TTSX with that 127 grain bullet um, out of the muzzle impact on the gel 2548 feet per second my retained weight was 126.7 grains the start of that mushroom was roughly one inch uh, into the gel the bullet stopped at 24 and a half inches of penetration from the inch and a half to the eight and a half inch you had roughly three and three quarter inch diameter permanent wound cavity from the eight and a half to twelve inch mark was that uh, rough one inch diameter permanent wound cavity and then the low velocity when punched into the ballistics calculator um, would have been roughly a 250 yard shot it was traveling at 2114 feet per second on impact the retained weight of that bullet was 126.5 the start of that mushroom was one inch into the ballistics gelatin and it stopped at 28 and a half inches of penetration from the two inch mark to the nine inch mark is where you had that permanent wound cavity the larger one of approximately three inch diameter from nine to twelve inches you had a one inch uh, permanent wound cavity diameter and then uh, playing with the ballistics calculator to equal roughly a 500 yard shot you would have to get this bullet moving at over 2900 feet per second so I definitely would not recommend this out of the Creedmoor although with the right powders and whatnot you could push it and probably get that especially if you had a uh, custom built 6.5 Creedmoor with a longer barrel on it that would help but uh, overall I'm a little surprised the Hornady GMX I'd have to say by far did the best as far as overall penetration and getting that large portion of your permanent wound cavity in the area that would be hitting a good double lung shot and taking out both lungs followed closely by the uh, Nosler E-tip and although I have hunted with Barnes, they work well. I have never shot anything with them over about 150 yards. So they perform very well for me. Having now shot them in gel, they're definitely going to be taken out of my hunting loads. I will be switching to the Hornady GMX for my lead-free hunting loads. Hope you guys enjoy this video.